From the roar of the crowd to the roar of the engine, this is Pit Pass. Pit Pass is brought to you by Aaron's of State College on the Benner Pike. By W.R. Hickey Beer Distributor, celebrating 80 years. And by Pocono Raceway, the Tricky Triangle. Here are your hosts, Ron Fox and Jan Miller. Hello and thank you for joining us this week for another edition of Pit Pass. Now before we get to some highlights, we do have some news to catch up on. Just after our show aired last week, we received word that Allegheny Mountain Raceway had closed effective immediately. I was hoping we would be able to make it to that track this season. So that's two that have closed already this season, and let's hope there are no more. Now, there is some good news. There are efforts underway to bring racing back to Evansburg Speedway. The track operated in the mid-90s under the direction of promoter Albi LaMonica. Now, tentatively, they're hoping to have a race the Sunday after the Cambria County Fair with the goal of having a full racing season in 2014. Yes, in fact, the plans are to have regular racing weekly on Sundays. We will keep you up to date. Also in the news, Brian Leppo is in the 1Z Zemco 410 Sprint, replacing Danny Lozowski. Leppo, who hadn't raced all season until finishing 7th at Port Royal on Saturday, will be in the ride for the Summer Nationals this week. No word on if this is a full-time ride. And our thoughts and prayers go out to 410 Sprint car driver Ryan Slothauer who fractured his spine in several places during a heat race at Lincoln on Saturday. Now, our race weekend got off to an early start with a trip to McKean County Raceway on Thursday. A rush late model tour event highlighted the evening. However, the super late models got things started. Robbie Blair in the 111 started on the pole position with Dick Barton in the blue 14 to his outside. Barton edges ahead slightly at the strike. Exiting turn two, Barton has a car length on Blair as Jason DuPont makes a bid for second. Going through three and four, Blair appears to have a nose on Barton. However, as they come to complete lap one, it is Barton with the lead. Blair and Barton would race door to door for a couple of laps before Blair was able to secure the top spot. 15-year-old Michael Oakes would retire early. He is the son of late model pilot Greg Oakes. Only 10 cars started the 25-lap event. The top five ran single file for many laps with Barton, DuPont, 71 Ron Davies, and Boone Briggs in the 99 at the top of the leaderboard. Blair pulled away from Barton while starting to lap cars. Here he puts a lap on the 0-3 of Doug Eck. Late in the race, Briggs would hug the bottom of turns three and four to pass Davies and move into the fourth position. Up front, Robbie Blair went unchallenged to pick up his fifth victory of the season. The race went caution free with Barton, DuPont, Briggs and Davies rounding out the top five. Brad Messler in the 15 ride and subbing for his father Bill would lead a 25 car field to the green for the 25 lap rush late model feature. Off of turn two, Max Blair in the 111 would shoot to the lead. Mike Pegger Jr. in the number one Cochrane machine races the 24 Paul Grigsby for third with the 99 of Rick Singleton and 12 of Ryan Montgomery battling for the fifth position. On the next lap, the 14 of Dusty Waters gets sideways on the front stretch after contact with the 31 of Richard Hemphill Jr. A total of 12 cars would be involved in this incident. Blair would choose the outer lane on the restart. As we get back up to speed, he and Messler exchange some paint. Blair rockets to the lead off of turn two, while Pegger challenges Messler for second place. Although the track crew cut some banking out of the turns, two and three wide racing is still the norm at MCR. Moments later, Pegger pulls even with Messler. He makes it stick on the bottom of turns one and two and moves up to second place. A lap later, Montgomery works the inside of Messler to take over the third spot through turns three and four. Joe Martin in the white 55 had to take a provisional to make the field, starting in the 25th position. He survived the multi-car pileup and quickly made his way into the top 10. By the halfway point of the race, Blair was lapping cars while Pegger began to close on the leader. Here it looks like Pegger may grab the lead, but a caution negates the pass. Grigsby would go pit side during this yellow flag period, moving Singleton up the fifth place. Blair would choose the inner lane on the restart this time, he pulls out to the lead, 
leaving Pegger and Montgomery battling for the runner-up position. Montgomery runs the high side in three and four, allowing Singleton to move under him in a race for third place. With 16 laps down, Messler loses the seventh spot after this incident with Chad Ruhlman. On the restart, Blair again gets a good jump on Pegger. Through turns one and two, Martin hugs the bottom and powers into the fourth spot. Singleton and the 94 Bryce Davis get together, slowing the 99 machine. On a lap 18 restart, Martin works the inside of Pegger for second place. There's contact between them, which stacks up the field. Cody Mason goes for a spin in the infield. During the caution period, Pegger, who came in leading the points by one over Singleton, went to the pits with a flat tire. He would not return and finish 14th in the race. As we get back underway, Martin remains within a car length of Blair after the restart. Bryce Davis had an impressive run. After being involved in the first caution and suffering a lot of sheet metal damage, he worked his way up to third place. Down the stretch, Max Blair would pull away from Joe Martin to take the checkers in the Rush late model tour event. Congratulations on your win. This is your sixth out of seven feature wins this season, correct? Yeah, up here it is, yep. And almost all those times, your father also won the super late models the same night. Yeah, three or four times. It, uh, it's definitely pretty neat when that happens. It definitely uh, it makes the next week a good one. In this race, Mike Pager, well, you said he's better at the restarts, but you were still able to beat him. Yeah, I don't think there's a great car in the country that restarts better than Mike does. Uh, he's just got his uh, carburetor and all that stuff figured out just perfect. The rest of us, we've been chasing him for a few years on that restart deal, but uh, as long as you're the leader and you can set your own pace, you know, it's not as big of a thing. But uh, his car definitely restarts better than every crate car I've ever seen. Now, Joe Martin gave you a race for your money at the end there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Joe had some bad luck in heat race. He broke while he was leading his heat. And uh, actually, I think he started 25th or 26th. And uh, to, to finish second from there, that's that's amazing. I was uh, I looked up at the board and seen the 55 was in second. I was like, oh, man, you know, you got to be kidding me. But uh, Joe's a good friend of mine, and that's an awesome run for him. Now, you know this track. You've run it quite a bit. But they've just changed it to make the cut down on the banking to make it easier on the engines. Did it change your setup? Uh, very little. I mean, it's still the same place. It's just uh, they, they slowed it down some, mainly for the, the super guys. It's just so hard on equipment when racetracks are that fast all the time. And uh, it doesn't make for real good racing either. It ends up being it'll lane up right around the top and just be wide open, where when you slow it down, you get better racing, and it's way easier on equipment. Well, congratulations again. Thank you. So, Joe, you took a provisional and started off in the back and came the whole way up through the field to finish at second. Yeah, we uh, last week we got caught up in a wreck in a uh, pill draw deal down at Lernerville, and we that ended our night down there in the heat race. And uh, this is our first time in the track since then, and some more problems showed up. So we just took advantage of the series provisional and uh, took it easy in the B main, and uh, you know had to work our way up through there. Now in this race there was a rad, rather large wreck on the uh, beginning of the third lap and you almost were a part of that. There were 12 cars involved, but you were able to weave your way through that. Yeah, I was actually probably the 13th. I was caught up with another car completely sideways, and I think it even stalled out, and somehow I just coasted forward, and it restarted, and I took off, so that worked out. You know, we got almost half the field right there. We, we had a good car, but that definitely, you know, in a 25-lap race, you need some luck, too, and we got some there. Following Max Blair across the line were Joe Martin, Bryce Davis, Ed Carley, and Rick Singleton. When we got to the track, I joked with Jan, wondering whether or not we should interview Max Blair before the race or just replay one of my old interviews with him. He did say that. <laughs> Max has won every crate late model race I've ever attended at McKean County Raceway. Yes, we will have more highlights from McKean County Raceway later on in the show. Next, we have some Saturday night action from Hummingbird Speedway. That and more when Pit Pass returns. I had no idea what I was getting into when I agreed to drive the Aaron's Dream Machine. I mean, I knew Aaron's was a great company, how they help people get the things they need without needing credit at a guaranteed low price. Aaron's is just great. But working with Michael Waltrip, seriously, I don't understand him at all. He's a mess. Unbelievably disorganized and extremely immature. Never serious. He's like the opposite of me. This is going to be a very long season.